Good morning, Jeff. Thanks for joining us again. And congratulations on getting your 2020 season started this year. I know it's been kind of wild. Um, and so we're just really excited to catch up with you and see what's happened and, and how you've been able to progress and be successful in 2020 with your energy FC season. So tell us what's going on. Yeah, well, first, thank you for having me back on, kid. I really appreciate it. And it's uh, it's great to see you and the the uh, BBB team again. Um, so I really appreciate the opportunity to to talk about what we have going on here with Energy FC and uh, and bringing live sports and entertainment back to Oklahoma City. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so I think the, the last time we talked, we were still going through kind of options on what that looked like mm -hmm. um, for for professional sports and and live entertainment and. So we, we were able to narrow that down. We got started playing uh, back here um, in Oklahoma City um, in early July. I think it was July 13th was our first match. Um, we had about a thousand fans in attendance, uh, which is, is uh, about, yeah, which is about uh, about 25 percent of our capacity when you include mm -hmm. staff and, and everything else that we have to have in place. Um, and so. You know, we're, we're going through those processes of, of what can we do different and how do we change things? Um, you know, I think that in any business, you're, 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 you have a couple of focuses. You have your star, which is your product, uh, in our case, this the soccer. Um, and then you have your, your main focus, which in our case is our fans, right? right. Um, and so we had to, we had to um, evolve and we had to grow a little bit in this process to make um, the star and the focus health and safety. Um, mm -hmm. So that we can put um, uh, something in place that is appropriate, um, given the circumstances, um, to keep not only our fans safe, to keep our players safe, to keep our staff safe, um, but then to also make sure that we're keeping the community as a whole safe. Uh, and so, you know, what we do um, to make sure that that is prepared and done correctly um, is important for all of Oklahoma City and every citizen inside of that. So that's really been our, our biggest uh, our biggest focus is is changing, you know, what we're looking at and we're saying, okay, let's start with the health, safety and wellness of it. Then let's go to the to the to the soccer and then let's go to the fans and let's go to the staff and so everything gets uh, rearranged a little bit. <laughs> Which I'm sure has been a really interesting model to have to undertake because that's obviously Health and safety is uh, probably, I would assume, one of your top concerns, regardless of what's going on. But I'm sure it just kind of etched up and went even higher as your number one concern is what it sounds like to me. So, you know, kudos to you and to your team for taking that um, on and just making that a priority and making sure that people understood what to expect and, and what their interaction with this new year is going to look like. Um, and so I'm curious. You know, when we last talked, you guys were working through like multiple plans. You had kind of A through Z trying to figure out if this happens, then we'll do this. And, you know, if this happens, then we'll do this. And so I'm curious of all of those different plans, was there one that really stuck out and you were like, okay, we nailed it. We, we got this right and we had the right protocols in place or what were the things that worked well? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I think we started with A to Z. I think we've narrowed it down to like A to Q or so. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we've we've got the process so, so that as a league we could get started. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and there's still hiccups along the way. Um, you know, we still have teams like New Mexico United um, who can't play home games right now, and so they're they're doing a lot of traveling um, mm -hmm. because they they have to quarantine for 14 days every time they step back inside of their own state. Um, so we're still learning and we're still going through that process. Um, but for us as a, as a local team uh, here in Oklahoma City, we've I think we've nailed down our process a little bit. Um, and there's a lot of protocols in place. Um, I could probably talk for a couple hours just on those. But, you know, the main ones that we focus on are we, we have a, what we call a testing bubble. And so there's uh, about 40 people in the organization. It's our technical staff, our players, the people mm -hmm. that are on the field and around the, the team the most um, that get tested for COVID-19 weekly. Um, okay. So we we have uh, about a 24 to 48 hour turnaround on those on those tests through a through a private lab so that we're not interfering with anything else that's happening, um, you know, in, in the marketplace with testing. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're making sure that our, our players safety is coming first um, and that and we're not putting anybody out on the field that can expose some someone else. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, across the league there, unfortunately, there have been some positive tests. Fortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, through contact tracing, we've been able to determine none of those have been on-field transmissions. 
okay. um, which is very important when uh, not just for us, but as uh, as one of the first leagues that is back to playing with uh, a, a, a live audience and back to uh, playing in in their own home stadiums and not in, in some sort of protected bubble format. Um, I think it's important data for everyone to have, especially as we look at the college sports and other things that are coming up is those on field transmissions are not happening. It's what yeah. is what are those teams doing off the field? And those are the things that now. So we we set up this pretty good system to keep everybody safe on the field, um, which helps keep our fans safe. Um, so now what we really have to pay attention to is, OK, well, what are the players doing off the field? What are they doing <laughs> in their own free time when we don't have the control mechanisms in place? Um, right. As a team, we've been very fortunate. We've had zero cases on our team. We've had zero cases mm -hmm. in our front office. Um, and so, you know, cross our fingers, knock on wood, you know, um, we do anticipate it happening at some point because it is so prevalent. Um, but I think the low, the lower we can keep those numbers, the better off we all are. Um, so we yeah. have a, a lot of, a lot right. of things in place to, you know, from how we travel to, um, you know, how the team checks in for practices to how we set up a locker room. It's not, um, it's just every little detail is different. Um, yeah. you know, and, and we're going through a process, you know, it, we have, we, you know, we invested in these, these large disinfectant augers and we come in and we fog the locker rooms and we even take it a step further for our fans and we go in pregame and postgame and we fog every hard touch surface in, in the building. So oh, every nice. seat, every handrail, every doorknob, every thing that you can imagine um, has been disinfected before people step inside the stadium. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do it again after we leave because we do share that with Oklahoma City Public Schools. And we want to make right. sure that we're leaving uh, a proper facility for them as well. Yeah. And I love that you touched on that because I think one of the things I really enjoyed from our last conversation is just how mindful you all are of the community, not just the, the soccer community and what that means, but the community as a whole. And you're such an integral part of helping keep other people safe that are coming in contact with that same stadium and arena and things like that. And so I think it's just really neat that you all are so thoughtful about how do we do this well, not just like what's the bare minimum that we have to do to feel good about it, but you know, how do we go above and beyond and, and really um, kind of demonstrate what other people should be thinking about doing and, and how we can all participate in that way. Absolutely. I mean, we want to be good stewards of of, of the city. Um, mm -hmm. We want to be representative of what Oklahoma City's best can be, um, and we want to set uh, some some standards for that. Uh, you know, our our first match back, we were on national TV on ESPN two. Um, so you know, we, we have a national platform very early on to say we're one of the very first events back. We're one of the first teams back, and we have fans in the stadium. And it's okay, and it's safe, and here's yeah. here's all the reasons why, right? Um, I think I think it's really easy for businesses to reopen. I think it's really hard for businesses to reopen correctly, um, and mm -hmm. it is worth the time, the effort, and the expense to do that to protect the city as a whole uh, and to yeah. protect um, everyone, whether they're walking in your doors or not. I think we all have the the, the um, responsibility to turn around and say, yeah, but we do have people coming in and they're going back out in the community. So we need to make sure that we're protecting everyone and be good stewards uh, of that process. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. And so I'm curious, um, kind of going back to one of the things that you touched on earlier, you know, the cases that have come up with players, it has more to do with what they're doing kind of outside of <laughs> game time and when they're yeah. with you. Um, so have you all looked at doing a model similar to what they're doing for other sports, like how the NBA is, is having everybody really stay kind of in their own bubble? Is that um, an option that you all have talked about? Is that even feasible? What does that look like for you? Yeah, absolutely. It was definitely um, that was probably the first model that we looked at uh, mm -hmm. the, the protected protected bubble um, model, and um, it, it's a good model. Uh, it, it's for our league and for our ownerships. Um, it is um, detrimental to um, to our businesses, though. Um, we okay. survive off of local partnerships. We survive off of uh, uh, fans. It's just the way our business model is set up. Um, and so we really had to, to go beyond that. It'd be easy enough to open one arena, um, you know, or stadium and, and rent out a hotel uh, from top to bottom and say, look, we can, we can just throw everybody in there and we're going to be okay. Um, I think it's another thing for us to say, we want to do this in our communities where, um, you know, we, we thrive on the participation of fans. We thrive mm -hmm. on being a local professional team. 
Um, that's what our business model is set up as. So, um, you know, we need to be true to that. And so it was worth the extra time and an expense that we've gone through to make sure that we can keep people um, not only safe, but still cheering for their team in front of their team. With the different things that you've put in place, what are the challenges that crept in that you weren't expecting that you thought, oh, why didn't we think of this as being one of our obstacles or roadblocks that we were going to have to face? Have you experienced any of those? Um, I would say, you know, some of the things that we overlooked were probably more common sense things. I think we probably tried right. to make it too difficult um, to start off with. You know, we're looking <laughs> yeah. at it and, and of course, you know, I mean, we work in sports. We're not health professionals by any means. So, you know, we're trying to take the advice of the CDC and, and mm -hmm. of our league that's working with, um, you know, a group of doctors and, and uh, you know, locally we're working with the Oklahoma City County Health Department. And um, so we're taking a lot of different pieces of advice from different groups. And um, and so we're, we're really, you know, how, how do we, how do we make sure everything is clean and sanitized and, you know, what, where do we open doors and leave doors open? How do we eliminate touch surfaces? And, you know, we're trying to go through that process. And, um, so I think some of the more common sense things we missed out on, like, you know, um, you know, we, we thought, Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll mark all of our lines. Um, we'll, we'll put a big X on the ground. Everybody's going to stand six feet apart. Um, but, um, all of our fans show up at the same time. So they don't care about the X's on the ground, right? And right. I wouldn't either. I'd be like, hey, I'm, I want to go in and the game's about to start, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and traffic patterns. So we rearranged the stadium um, for traffic patterns. And it's really hard to see traffic patterns until you let people in and see how they move about. Uh, yeah. So once we change things um, immediately for the second game, we had more changes that we needed to institute because it was really important not to just make a plan, but to then study mm -hmm. that plan, review that plan. Um, and so far, every match, we've changed little subtle changes to make it better for uh, for the fans on ingress, egress, um, keeping uh, a distance from the players and making sure that we're providing that that safety barrier um, in every situation, um, no matter if they're, you know, where they're at. So we were really concerned early on about the field, you know, and, and now we got to make sure we're just as concerned about how they come on and off the field and those walkways and those paths and so mm -hmm. some of the some of the other things that we I think take for granted to say yeah the players walk to the locker room okay well we have to have this giant twenty foot moat because we have to not only do fans come down and want to see them uh, and you know I, I think we're really used to high fives and we're really used to those right. things so we have to we have to create some distance for that but you know then it was a conversation with the players to say we created this giant moat for you guys but you're still going over and talking to the fans and you yeah. really can't do that <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, and, and that and has to be so difficult for them because I imagine they get a lot of their enthusiasm and just yeah. kind of pumped up for the game. And if you've had a win, then afterwards wanting to celebrate with your fan base, like I can imagine that being really difficult. Yeah, I mean that's part of the excitement of it, right? Is I mean you're you're on a stage, and when you're on a stage, you want people cheering for you, and so that's part yeah. of the fun. And you know they're so accustomed to those interactions, um, and so then it's. Okay, we blocked the fans, but we didn't really think about having that conversation with the team. So then we have the conversation, and you know, and then it's better, and it's better, and it's and it gets better and better. Um, and so, just those little those little things that I think we tend to take for granted are the things that um, um, you have to really pay attention to. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. But so I'm curious then coming out of that because you know I think any of us anticipated there's going to be challenges, and and we know there's going to be things that. We just didn't think of kind of like your moat, like not being able to hold players back right. and then not realizing you you can't go to them. We kept them away right. from you. Now you don't cross it yourself. Um, but I'm curious as you've gone forward in this, like what's the silver lining that you've seen? Because, you know, with us, like one of the things that we've experienced is just the opportunity to work remotely. It's a plan that we've always had in place and our staff's always been able to take advantage of and they just haven't necessarily taken advantage of it fully. Maybe it's a day or two here or there. And so now, because we've transitioned so much, it's enhanced all of these other things. And so I'm curious from your perspective with the um, kind of like your office administrative team, your your sports team, like what's the silver lining that you've seen now that you've gotten back into your season? Yeah, I, I think there's there's probably a few, and I think working remotely and the ability to to give people that option um, is definitely one of them. I'm I'm a, a pretty big proponent of that. I think that we've seen really, really quality high end work come from our from our team as as you know as you have and and others uh -huh. have as well. Um, 
you know, I think one of the bigger things that have probably impacted me personally um, is the first game that we came back. Um, so, you know, obviously we had, uh, like I said, we had about a thousand fans there and they were super excited and they were, they were pumped to be back in the community and be back around each other. Um, and so that's, that's, you know, that's what we're there to provide. And so I was, of course, very happy to see that. Um, but I had a few of our front of house workers. Um, so ushers, ticket takers, and, mm -hmm. and those types of positions that came over to me um, before the game. Um, and they said, thank you. Uh, thank you for bringing their jobs back. And mm -hmm. that's impactful. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's the silver lining is that we're able to um, put people back into the community, um, put people back to work and um, provide a little bit of that uh, belonging. Um, that mm -hmm. sense of belonging is so important, whether you're, you know, and we always think about it from the fan perspective, but it's just as much for the, for the staff and those temporary workers that are, that are in the stadium, you know, we're, we're able to bring back, you know, roughly a, a, a hundred jobs um, for every game that we play. And that is, to me is a, is a silver lining. That's a, that's a big deal. Yeah, that's really, I love that you brought that up because I would not have anticipated that part of it. And so for people to be so thankful and to reach out in that way, I'm sure that means a lot to you and to the rest of your team. Um, yeah. as they're doing that and knowing that this kind of family that you've created, it really goes beyond the people you see day in and day out. Right. And that they're looking forward to those opportunities too and that they're part of this whole culture that you've built. And I think that says so much for what you are doing and how you're doing it. Because, you know, if they didn't feel safe <laughs> and they didn't right. feel like you were taking the right precautions, they probably wouldn't have come back. Right, exactly. You know, and that was part of it. We wanted to make sure that we shared what those uh, what those safety protocols and measures were with the staff. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that they're um, not only informed for their own safety, but so that they can inform the, the fans and the guests as well. And, um, you know, most of our, our temporary staff that does those front of house um, uh, positions, um, you know, they're 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 elderly, they're retired. A lot of them work not only for, for our stadium, but they work for the Chesapeake Arena and the Bricktown Ballpark. Um, and so for us to be able to bring back live sports and entertainment to Oklahoma city, um, it, it's more impactful than, than everybody realizes. It's more impactful than just fans. It's more impactful than just um, some, some revenue, right? We're actually impacting people's lives and, you know, people, people come first, people are important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm curious the um, the number that you created, the thousand fans that were able to come for that first game, is that about the number that you were expecting? Did you limit the number of tickets so you knew you only could let in that many people? What was the um, thinking behind that or just what was your anticipation of that? Yeah, our, our expectations are um, we, we have no idea what to expect anymore. Um, <laughs> I, I've been in sports and entertainment for 20 years and um, I honestly, I have no idea what to expect these days. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of people that say, yes, bring back live sports. And then they go, well, we're going to see how it goes first. Um, yeah. You know, we have a little bit more capacity. We can open up a little bit more and still be um, inside of social distancing guidelines and still do some things like that. Um, would I love to pack the stadium and fill it? Absolutely. Is it the smartest thing to do right now? No, not at all. Um, and so... You know, we, I think we just have to, to set expectations aside and focus on um, doing what's right for those that are there, whether that's five people or 1,500 people, it doesn't matter. Um, and so that's the, 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 the business planning side of it, um, while it pains me, it just, it, it, you have to set it aside and kind of ignore it for a little bit um, and focus on how do we manage right now at this moment and um, do the best we can so that we can continue to uh, slowly grow and build back because we have to mm -hmm. we have to prove that we're a safe environment for people we have to prove that um, we didn't just throw open our doors with the no caution um, and allow people in and um, so i think that game by game we're proving that to the community and we're we're seeing people start to turn up a little bit more and we're starting to see that people are more comfortable with it we've had some amazing partners and our sponsors um, that are still supporting us and still sending employees and um, and that's that 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 shows that we're doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so how many games have you all played this season? Um, so we, we managed to get one big game in before everything shut down. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and so um, when we restarted, we came back. Uh, so we have seven seven home games. Okay. Um, um, and then we've already played a few. So we have uh, four home games left. We have one this weekend, 
uh, one next weekend and then uh, uh, later in the month and then late in September we play as well. Okay, perfect. So I'm curious, have you seen the, um, like the television schedule or any of that change and just to make sports more available um, to the general public just because ticket sales are obviously limited and things like that. Have you been able to do anything differently there? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, our, our first match was on ESPN2. It was a nationally televised match, um, which is, you know, fantastic and, and um, uh, something that we're not necessarily accustomed to. There's um, yeah. ESPN Deportes um, is is running a schedule each month now, and they're picking up um, games all across the country in our league, the USL. Um, and so they're really uh, playing their part. We, um, we're also on every match is on ESPN Plus on the app platform. Um, so we do have the ability to have a national audience through that. Um, and internationally, um, you know, we're on YouTube, uh, YouTube live still, you know, for our first match back, uh, versus, uh, Tulsa, we, um, we had the, uh, most international views of any team in the league that weekend. Um, wow. and so, you know, there's these little, these little things that you don't really think about. And we got that stat mm -hmm. back and I was like, I, I didn't even think about it. It didn't even cross my mind to even ask how many international know? viewers. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so, you know, I, I think we had almost 10,000 people internationally watch the match and, um, yeah. you know, from our seat, that's, that fits our mission. That fits our, our vision for what we want the club to be is, you know, internationally recognized. And mm -hmm. so we're, we're working that way. We're getting, we're getting to where we need to be. Yeah. Which I think is such a, a testament to how much people are, are really looking for those opportunities, not necessarily to get back to normal but to find the things that they've loved and the things right. that they've missed. And so I think we all can agree that going forward, we know it's going to look different. There's no way around it. <laughs> we okay. don't have a choice. It okay. just is, it's, it is our reality. And so being able to just pull in a little bit of the things that we have appreciated and loved and have built that community and that camaraderie around I think is so huge. And that stat that you talked about with having the, the biggest viewers, like for that particular match, I think is tremendous. It's just such a good testament to what you are providing and, and making that available to people because they're not looking for it just here in Oklahoma. They're looking for it around the globe. And that's right. awesome. I, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that's, that's a, ultimately, that's what we're trying to provide people is that sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think we talked about it a little bit last time we spoke, Kit, and that, you know, that I don't, there is no normal, right? There is, it's not the right. new normal. It's just that there, it's just the odd right now, right? So, um, and that's probably how things are going to go and, and we'll never be back to truly normal. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think that, um, you know, uh, we should all buy stock and hand sanitizer because, you know, that's, that's going to be part of the new normal, right? But, um, <laughs> um, you know, but what we can provide as sports is we can provide community, whether you're here or afar, we can provide community. We can provide belonging. Um, we can provide those 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 social cues that connect people, um, mm -hmm. whether you're here or you're sitting in Germany. We can provide that, and yeah. so you know that's that's the sense of of camaraderie and the sense of community that that sports ties together. Um, and one of the reasons that we do what we do, we don't we don't do this to you know we don't play soccer to to play soccer. We play soccer to unite um, to unite a community of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's neat. And so going forward into the future with all the changes that you've made, you know, not knowing what your 2021 season is going to look like or what any of us will be experiencing, you know, even six months down the road, I'm curious, what are the things that you're seeing that you all have really latched on to? Like, this is probably something that we will always continue to do whether it's the new logistics of like getting in and out of the stadium and traffic flow or, um, processes, procedures, like what are the things that you're like, you know what, we never had to do this before, but it's not a bad thing. Like this is the good thing that regardless of a pandemic or anything else, like we need to really think about making this part of our, our normal and part of our routine. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it, a lot of the things that we've implemented, we're going to keep from the, the way okay. that we load in and load out of the facility mm -hmm. from a safety standpoint is going to be important. Um, the ingress and egress, um, we've changed our bag policies um, to what people can and cannot bring into the stadium. Um, I think those are all important things that are going to stay that we've added 
um, you know, 30 to 40 hand sanitizing stations around the stadium. We'll probably, yeah. even, you know, we'll probably continue to add to that as they become available. Um, you know, that's that's one thing we're all looking at. How do we add some of those things and, and simply not available right now? Uh, there's just huge demand, especially with schools going back. Um, so, you know, we'll continue to add to those components of it. Um, we've changed over to, um, you know, if you want to be completely contactless in our stadium, you you can. Um, mm -hmm. You every ticket is digital. It's on your phone. Um, concessions, merchandise, everything can be completely um, contactless, whether that's through a chip card um, or through Apple Pay or Google Pay or any of those um, opportunities. But those are things that are fantastic. Those are things that um, not only speed up lines and processes, but keep people safe um, at the same time. And so from a business perspective, they just make sense. Yeah. And so, it, you know, it's kind of pushed us to make, we've been slowly moving towards it. And I think it pushed us to, um, to move much faster um and and make us uh, run a little bit more lean which is which is you know overall good for the business so mm -hmm. yeah those are definitely Absolutely. things that we'll be keeping in place yeah and so i'm curious you mentioned merchandise how's that going this year have you got new like face masks <laughs> that are yep. logoed up and have energy on it or energy special hand sanitizer what is have you guys implemented anything new there yeah, face mask. We've been sell we sell out of face mask every game. So we we order okay. in as many of them as we can, and then we sell out of them. Um, mm -hmm. So you know that's been the really interesting one um, for us. Our our uh, you know traditionally we make most of our our merchandise sales at at game and venue. Um, and mm -hmm. this year our numbers are going to flip a little bit. They're going to be heavy on on internet sales. Yeah. Um, and less in venue sales. I'm um, just from from opportunity base. So uh, we had a, a great new partner this year in Adidas, and so we've been able to roll out a lot of new things that people haven't been able to see or touch or or you know um, to to have that opportunity yet. And so we're 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 excited um, to get people back in the same so they can see them. But we're still seeing a lot of online and internet sales, um, which is is different for a sports team. Right, which I'm sure you all anticipated, just because we are trying to go as contactless as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's, I can imagine that's changed around some of your logistics and how your team's able to operate and getting things out and shipping and receiving. And um, yeah. I have a really good friend that lives in Tulsa who his whole business has moved to online. And it's yeah. been great because he's not having any travel as much, but it's also been really hard because he's like, now I have to figure out how to do this packaging and shipping and, and do it efficiently. Um, and it's not part of his like typical skill set. So it's been neat to watch that evolve over time. So I'm yeah, sure absolutely. You, know, you, move into this, you move into this process of, um, you know, normally we're picking out things that we like and then we, we sell them. So all of a sudden we're worried about supply chain and we're worried about yeah. logistics. Um, and so, you know, you have to change your, your mentality a little bit to say, okay, well, we were talking about fashion, but now we're talking about how quickly can I um, deliver it to a customer and how do mm -hmm. I package it so that when they get it, they're excited about it and they, they feel good about it. And, um, you know, how do we get people excited about buying something that they haven't necessarily tried on or how have they seen and how do we work returns in a, in a COVID um, society where, you know, we, we, that's an issue, right? And so we've got mm -hmm. to implement new processes and procedures to, to do those types of things. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, there's always something new to develop and try, which is kind of interesting. It's also kind of tiring. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, I'm going to try another new process. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, but, the, you know, that's part of the fun part is, is trying those mm -hmm. new things. Um, because I think we do strike gold every now and then, and we're able to look at that and go, wow, this is so much easier. This is so much of a better process. Um, yes. You know, because it's easy to fall in those routines and say, well, this is the way it's always worked, right? And I think this is, and it's not just for us as a sports team. I think that's happening across business in general as everybody's going, okay, well, the way it worked is broken. So now we have to, we have to innovate and we have to, um, we have to find new ways. And so people are doing that. And I, I think it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So one of the other things that I'm curious about, um, because I know that you all are really involved in the school system and getting your players out and making sure that they engage with students and that they are part of the community and and with everything that's going on with the school system um, and some of it, you know, staying virtual, staying remote, um, maybe going in one or two days a week and um, pushing back the start date. Have you all been able to make any plans as far as going into schools or even maybe doing something virtually with the school system? 
Um, we're working through that process right now. So, um, because of the, the, the rules that are in place um, for our players at this time, they can't really go out and do those things. They, they're not really supposed to go out and do the camps and the clinics and the meet and greets and, yeah. and all those different things. So we're trying to, to work with our partners to find the, to find better solutions. Um, you know, we were, we were, um, we're able to um, obviously try to get into the community and help encourage in other ways. Um, you know, we're, we're working with a, a group to um, film some, some different, mask PSAs to use our players to encourage people mm -hmm. to wear their mask and um, you know those will be used um, um, out in the public and in schools where we've uh, done some some video stuff with our, our friends at uh, PAL the Police Athletic League and Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's just trying to find those those partnerships and what are they doing and how can we fit into that program safely? How can we fit into that without having to be physical? Right. And so there's definitely an ongoing process um, and that we're, we're learning through and everybody's learning through it. You know, everybody's having to change what they're doing. And so, um, you know, I think we're all scratching our heads a little bit and saying, oh, let's try it. Let's go for it. Right. Um, let's see what, we'll this see what happens. Like. Yeah. And, you know, we'll we'll adjust and we'll go from there. And. Um, you know, the most important thing that we can do is keep moving forward and not not stand still and say, well, we can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Let's let's find out what we can do and, um, you know, how we can do those things. And so it's just uh, it's just that mentality of, of pushing forward. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Well, Jeff, it has been such a delight to catch up with you and see what's going on. And I'm excited to see how you all are able to end the season um, and just working through all some of the nuances and things that continue to evolve. So before we wrap up, um, just for most people who maybe haven't found you online before or anything like that, what are the different ways in which we can um, either watch a game or get in contact with you? What are your social media channels? What's the best way to reach out and stay connected to Energy FC? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. EnergyFC.com. Um, all social media channels are, are at Energy FC. Um, you know, and I, I highly encourage everybody, um, you can watch us on the ESPN plus app. Um, and if you're, if you're comfortable and you want to, uh, venture out, um, absolutely come see and check out a live event in Oklahoma city again. Um, you know, I promise we'll keep you safe. Awesome. Well, Jeff, thank you so much. Like I said, it's just, it's been great to catch up with you. And one of the things that just from my perspective is working with BBB for seven years now and getting to see all the different things that businesses are doing. Um, one of the things that I love about what you're doing with your team and what Energy FC stands for is just the integrity that you bring to your organization and to our community as a whole. And I just, I commend you for that and I appreciate it because it means a great deal to me and to my family and knowing that there are organizations like yours out there that really are trying hard to keep the rest of us safe while providing, you know, a family friendly environment where I know I could take my kids to and, and they could be safe and still have a really great experience and have that great outing. Um, and so being a part of our community, thank you so much for that. Well, thank you, Kit, and thank you for everything that the Better Business Bureau does. Um, to keep um, Oklahoma City and, and uh, you know, and keep everybody um, uh, safe as well. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And with that, hopefully we'll have a part three. We can do something after the season, final wrap up. How did it go? And what are we looking forward to in 2021? <laughs> yeah, hopefully after a playoff run. We'll see. There we go. I love it. <laughs> well, thank you, Jeff. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Thank you, Kit.